Hello everyone. Uh, before I even get started, I wanted to ask you guys something while it's on my mind. Uh, can, well, basically, can you hear me okay is what I'm wanting to know. Uh, I've you know, been posting, normally you guys don't, haven't mentioned it or haven't brought it up, but I've been posting these, the videos on YouTube and I've had several people say that they can't hear them, that they turn the volume up all the way and that the sound is still barely coming through. Uh, and probably for the past few weeks, I, ha I stopped using the microphone. Remember, I used to have the little microphone I was holding. I stopped and just started using the phone's uh, sound system, whatever's on here. Um, so have you been able to tell a difference? Number one, which is better, uh, the microphone or without the microphone? And three, can you even, can you hear me okay? Uh, an what I kind of wanted to talk about today was... Uh, crossing the abyss and um, becoming a master of the temple and Aleister Crowley. The reason I've, I've brought this up is because uh, every time like I post something uh, like on not on here but like on social media that has to do with Crowley in any way people come out of the woodwork talking about Crowley didn't finish the work Crowley didn't finish the work uh, usually people who are under that assumption read that in a book somewhere usually by someone either connected to the Golden Dawn or, or uh, of that particular lineage and or, or anything else you know and and to, to be fair the Golden Dawn has uh, done a great deal to preserve these teachings and practices all the way up into modern times however they did not do it for the benefit of mankind. You know, even the other day when we were talking about this book, the Golden Dawn book that has all of their teachings in it, whenever the Golden Dawn collapsed, um, the, this was never meant to be made public. No one was ever supposed to see this. The Golden Dawn actually considers themselves uh, like a kind of aristocracy of, of magic. Like they're the pure lineage and... It has to be passed down only through them and all this sort of thing. So whenever the, the original Golden Dawn started to collapse, they decided they were going to destroy all of their materials, all of their teachings, so that no one else would ever have access to them. The only reason this survived is because Israel Regarde, who was Aleister Crowley's secretary, decided he was going to break his vows and break his oaths and make this material open to the public, to anyone who wanted it and wanted to use it. Uh, and that was a big part of the falling out between Crowley and the Golden Dawn. You know, you'll hear Crowley quoted all the time as saying, the law is for all. That's because part of what he was trying to do was make it so that, you know, he even said at one point it's for that, that magic is for uh, the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker, meaning anybody who wants to try it should be able to take a crack at it. The Golden Dawn, on the other hand, uh, they always believed, like even to join them, you had to submit an application. They look over your application and decide whether you're even worth their time or effort or attention. And if you are, which very few people were, then they contact you and, and you would be assigned a tutor. Uh, Crowley just threw this stuff out there for anybody to start being able to use it. Um, Part of why he fell out with the Golden Dawn also is because he advanced so much more quickly than any other uh, member of the Order ever had before. Um, he did, in fact, not only attain the knowledge and conversation of his HGA, uh, and once you do the same, you understand exactly what he's talking about. You know, this, this, it's, it's really not that big esoteric a deal. He found through his experiments, and I also found through mine, that there are a lot of different ways to accomplish that goal, not just doing the Abra Malin ritual. You know, the sacred magic of Abra Malin the mage. Um, you can do it through a prolonged period of really intense 
magic using pentagram rituals, using hexagram rituals, using uh, all kinds of different techniques, but it has to be incredibly, incredibly intense and focused in order for it to happen. After you accomplish, uh, after you attain the knowledge and conversation of your holy guardian angel, you will then start the process of what we call crossing the abyss. And this is where people, once you cross the abyss, you become what they call a master of the temple. A master of the temple is one of the secret chiefs. You take your place among the secret chiefs. Crowley at one point came out and announced that he had become one of the secret chiefs. People who had not made it as far as he had automatically scoffed, discounted what he said, uh, paid no attention to it because they didn't understand what that even meant. I've done a couple of videos now where I was talking about how whenever we physically die, uh, the energy that we have accumulated disperses and goes out to become one with all things. Um, and whenever that happens, if we have accumulated enough energy, you become a part of uh, everyone's memory. You know, and, and I've said that could be anything from George Washington and Abraham Lincoln to people like Jesus and Muhammad and Moses and, uh, you know, all, all sorts of uh, Rasputin. Um, tons of people have completed this process throughout time. What happens the, when you, you'll know when someone, when, when Crowley announced that he had become master of the temple and one of the secret chiefs, Basically what he was saying was he had become, he knew if he died at that point, he had become part of everyone's memory. That people in the world would remember him and because now he would be part of each and every one of us and they could access these teachings and practices uh, and, and come across this work by knowing about him, which was, you know, a huge part of how everyone in the world now comes in contact with magic. There are very few people in the world who practice any sort of magic whatsoever that don't at least know who Crowley is. Uh, so the way you know that someone has become a secret chief is because the world will remember them after they've gone. Uh, and one of the telltale signs of someone who is approaching crossing the abyss is they will start to make teachings known and those teachings will start to gain a foothold or some kind of traction. People will start paying attention to them in some way. That's how you know that the process has actually started. Um, you know, we think of these things like crossing the abyss and attaining the knowledge and conversation of your holy guardian angel. We think of these things as huge things. But once you accomplish them, uh, once you've experienced them, you realize that they're not like these, these lofty goals that, that only the tiny fraction of people can accomplish. Only a tiny fraction of people do accomplish them, but it's because very few people ever attempt to do it. Uh, if you sincerely attempt to do it in a focused, intense way, and you usually do have to have someone guiding you. That's the thing. Not necessarily in order. Crowley decided after he left the Golden Dawn that the lodge system does not work. It will always degenerate, deteriorate, turn into gossip, people taking sides with each other, battles, all this sort of stuff. He realized the only way for the future for this to work was one teacher, one student one teacher, one student. Like for example, uh, I became part of the AA when I was in prison. What happens in the AA is someone will seek them out on the internet in some way and say, you know, I would like to become a member, I would like to learn, I would whatever. The AA then assigns you a tutor. That tutor will be the only person that may be the only person that you ever know in, in the entire order unless other people start to make themselves known to you. They get to choose whether they, they want to do that or not. Um, I'm going to pick up, we're getting close to 10 minutes, so I'm going to stop for right now, and I'm going to pick up where we're leaving off uh, tomorrow. I hope you guys have a good day. I hope you are well, and um, thank you so much for being with me, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.